G'day guys, this is Tyr, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 guide. This one has been requested a lot from a lot of new players that have found my channel. Basically, in today's video, I will be explaining in depth how to effectively and correctly play a low health, bloodied build in Fallout 76, complete with every single tip and trick I could think of, so be sure to watch the whole video to be fully informed on this topic if you are new. Now, I often find myself answering a lot of questions on different videos about how I stay alive with such little health, why I have so much radiation and how I'm dealing so much damage, among many other frequently asked questions. So I figured I should finally make a comprehensive tips and tricks video to answer all of that and more. Now I understand that for a lot of you watching, this information will be moot and useless to you since you probably already know the ins and outs of a bloodied low health playstyle. I understand that. However, this video is for the new players and the new viewers on my channel, so that they can get all of their questions answered in one easy, convenient location, and who knows, maybe some of you 76 veterans watching may learn something you didn't know beforehand. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the guide. Firstly, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the radiation covering 80% of your health bar. Do not be afraid of it, in fact, you should welcome it because that radiation is going to be the basis that makes the low health bloody build possible in the first place. We would not be able to play this way and have all of these benefits without it. And I specifically said that the radiation should cover 80% of your health for a reason. This is the sweet spot for the radiation levels. We always want to have at least 80% of our health bar covered in radiation, leaving only 20% of the bar remaining being our actual health meaning that we will be below 20% HP as far as the game is concerned, and I'll touch on that more in depth later on, but basically that is the maximum point where we gain all of our benefits for being low health. And if the pictures and footage on screen for this segment weren't clear enough of where that 80% coverage for radiation point is, then two very easy ways to tell if you're there is to number one, equip the Nerd Rage perk. This activates when you are below 20% health, or in this case when 80% of our health is taken up by radiation. And we can see this in our effects tab in our Pip-Boy. So you can visually see this and then become accustomed to learning where the sweet spot is, either by going into the effects tab and seeing it written there, or by having the Nerd Rage Vault Boy appear on the left hand side of your screen. And the other way is to hop into Power Armor temporarily, because whilst you are in Power Armor, if you haven't messed with your settings, your HUD should show your health being divided up into percentages, as you can see right here. And keep in mind that using things like Radex Diluted and Rad Shield to temporarily ensure your radiation level remains unchanged is a welcome strategy once you have it set to that sweet spot. Now, the main reason we are using radiation to lower our health is because it acts as kind of a health gate for lack of a better term. It ensures that we will never heal over more than 20% of our health, and this is the most effective way to play bloodied. Simply because you are still able to heal yourself with Stimpaks freely without worrying about going above the 20% health sweet spot. It literally allows us to heal from attacks, but at the same time, it gates us off from going above that threshold that we want to stay below. Now, let's touch on the next segment before we actually start talking about the benefits that being low health can bring you. The most common complaint I hear among people is that it's too hard to manage your radiation and too difficult to make sure you're at the correct level of radiation. And to that I say absolutely not. It's incredibly easy and let me show you how. Without a doubt the three easiest and best ways to manage your radiation and give yourself enough radiation to get yourself to that 20% HP threshold that we want to be at is simple. Number one is toxic goo. This is the only thing I need to carry around with me on all of my bloodied characters. I carry at least 20 bottles at a time, and let me tell you, they are very easy to get your hands on and are very plentiful. All you have to do is head to West Tech, the home of the Super Mutants, and sneak in through the front door and walk to the first corridor where the radiation showers are. You'll find a green pool of liquid on the floor, and just collect as many of bottles of toxic goo as you desire. I recommend 20 at all times, like I said, which will weigh 10 pounds which is extremely easy to manage, so no, you don't need fucking through Hiker. And if you ever do run out of these toxic goo jars, just come on back to West Tech and resupply. Every time you're here, you can kill the mutants and farm them for experience points as well. So then it's not just a wasted trip, 
you can hit two birds with one stone and gain levels while you're farming for your toxic goo. Now, upon drinking the toxic goo, you will take a large amount of radiation. It should be 125 rads, if you have no radiation resistance. This makes it incredibly easy for you to fine tune your radiation levels, or just quickly spam it so then you're down below there where we want to be. Just favorite the goo, select your favorites menu, and drink the toxic goo until you're at that 20% threshold. It's as easy as that. But if the 125 rads is for whatever reason too much for you and you'd like more control over how much you can fine tune your radiation level, there is another option. I recommend traveling to Blackwater Mine next to White Springs and walking up to this pool right here of toxic goo and collect about 20, the same that I recommended for the goo. Now this toxic water here will give you 30 rads per consumption as opposed to the 125 rads that the goo gave. Now, which as I said, this makes it easier to fine tune your rads to your desired level. And you can come back to both of these locations at any time to resupply and manage your radiation level easily. Now, the third way is by having a radiation barrel at your camp. This can be acquired via the radiation rumble event as a rare reward, but it can also be placed by your friends if you do not own the plans and are not fortunate enough to unlock it through that event. So like I said, Either place it yourself or have your friend place it for you at your camp and every time you activate it you will gain 30 rads per activation of the barrel. So these are by far the top three easiest ways to both manage and induce radiation onto yourself and like I said it's incredibly easy. Also speaking of managing your radiation it is useful to know that every time you die even if you are well below the 20% health sweet spot you will always respawn with about 65% of your health covered in radiation instead of the desired 80% coverage that we want. Meaning if you do die, you will respawn with more health and won't be gaining the full benefits of your bloodied playstyle. Now unless you realize this and reinduce yourself with the radiation, you'll be playing with a hindrance. So yeah, it's important to remember that if you do happen to die, you will have to respawn and re-rad yourself. And do take note that there is a 10 second grace period where your character will not be affected by radiation upon respawning. So don't go chugging your toxic goo as soon as you respawn and then wonder why it isn't working because it will not take effect until that 10 second radiation window for respawn immunity is over. Just another tip for you all that I thought I'd throw in. Now moving on to the next segment, we will be talking about the actual benefits we can get while we are low health. And this is largely dependent on your in-game economic power. And what I mean by that is, do you have the ability to trade valuable items with other players in the game? Because if you don't, then you may find it difficult to acquire the necessary items to make a bloodied low health build work correctly. To elaborate on this, to make a low health build receive all of its benefits and work to its fullest potential, you will need a full set of unyielding armor. And you are welcome to use a bolstering set of armor as that gives you a lot of damage resistance. But that's not really where this build shines its brightest. So we will definitely want to work towards that unyielding armor set. And also we can't forget the weapon. We need a bloodied weapon. Now god roll versions with specific legendary effects are very valuable and hard to get your hands on. However one star variations are easy to acquire and will serve you as a good foundation piece until you'll get your hands on something a little bit more prestigious. So it's perfectly valid to just run a one star bloodied handmade rifle or one star bloodied super sledge or minigun depending on what your build is obviously until you get your hands on that really powerful god roll three star equipment that we need. So yeah. Don't let in-game value deter you from this playstyle, just work with what you have at your disposal and you'll be able to eventually get the items you're chasing. So, now let's talk about what these items will give you in terms of benefits. Let's assume that you have your full legendary unyielding set of armor. This will give you a total of plus 15 points into each one of your special stats points, except for endurance. This means 15 more strength for a total of 75% more melee damage and 75 more pounds of carry weight capacity. Then 15 extra perception, which means you have a much easier time hitting your targets in VATS, which obviously goes without saying is very useful. 15 extra charisma means that you can buy and sell items at a higher value to in-game vendors. 15 extra intelligence means we level up about 30% faster due to the percentage of experience we gain from higher intelligence. 
15 extra agility means 75 more action points that we can use for vats and anything else that uses AP, and it also makes us harder to detect while in stealth, which are both awesome bonuses. And last but not least, 15 extra luck will allow our vats critical bar to fill up faster, allowing us to deliver a more damaging strike more frequently. And let's be clear, all of these benefits are absolutely awesome, but they do only come with a full set of unyielding armor and also let's be clear here that these bonuses only activate fully once you are under that 20% HP threshold. This is probably one of the main reasons why being at that sweet spot in our health bar is so important. Also, quickly, a nice benefit to being bloodied with unyielding armor is that you will pass any dialogue speech check objective requiring a certain amount of special points to complete, which could be labeled as unfair to the rest of the player base, but it's a good way to pass all speech checks in this game, so keep that in mind if you're playing the Wastelanders DLC or Still Dawn DLC. Now for the bloodied weapon. Even if it is only a one star, it will serve you well, especially if your build is revolved around that weapon type. Basically, the way the bloodied legendary effect works on weapons is that the lower your health gets, the more damage you deal with said weapon. And this can continue all the way down until 95% of your health is covered in radiation or missing, all the way up until only 5% of your health is remaining. And at that 5% point, you will receive roughly 100% extra damage output on your weapon, which is pretty powerful. This in combination with some other features that I will touch on in the future is why I deal a lot of damage with my bloodied weapons. But even though you would gain more damage if you covered your health almost entirely in radiation, it is still not recommended that you do so. At least not until you are competent enough with the playstyle to do so without dying frequently. Because let's not forget, you've only got 5% of your health bar there if you want to be dealing that type of damage. No, it is still recommended that you remain under 20% health and keep 80% of it afflicted with radiation instead of going balls deep and leaving only 5% of your health remaining uncovered by radiation. Now, I feel that we have covered the armor and weapons in detail enough of why they are used for a low health build, and if you have any remaining questions about that topic, feel free to ask them down in the comments. But now we will be moving on to the segment of perks. These are 100% going to be the most important part of your bloody build. If you do not equip the correct perks for your build, you will be at a significant disadvantage. I have covered this topic extensively in a three-part testing series I have on my channel. I tested my low health bloodied builds by handicapping myself in different ways to test what was really important to the playstyle. Feel free to check those out in the description. But anyways, like I said, perks are supremely important, especially with this playstyle. So there isn't really any room for picking useless perks like Good With Salt or Through Hiker. Especially now since eating and drinking is not required by the game. Basically, you'll want to take all the defensive perks you can fit into your build since we'll be at such low health. I will have on screen examples of all of my different builds and how I have fit them into my card deck. Basically, you will want to prioritize the perks that state that they give you better protection by a percentage. Like Blocker which reduces incoming melee damage by 45% or dodgy, which reduces all incoming damage by 30% at the cost of 30 action points. The reason we want to prioritize perks that work by percentage first is because they are so much more powerful than perks that just add extra damage resistance to your character, like Evasive or Barbarian, since clearly reducing the total damage you take by a percentage is much more effective than adding onto your total damage resistance. Especially since they both have diminishing returns, the higher your damage resistance and damage percentage negation gets. But with that being said, it is still advisable to try and fit those other perks that add damage or resistance into your build as well, since every bit of damage or resistance does add up and help. Basically, you're going to want to take the perks that suit your needs and that fit your build. So for example, if you're running a stealth character, you obviously will rely on stealth and will not need to defend yourself with defensive perks, since your character will never get hit in the first place. But if your character does not rely on stealth, obviously defensive perks are needed. And if you want specifics and want to copy a template, like I said, feel free to follow any one of my build guides. The playlist for that will be linked in the description. But anyway, there are defensive perks that are optional, and then there are perks that we absolutely do depend upon, for staying alive and dealing extra damage with this playstyle. 
the most important one without a doubt is Serendipity. This perk gives us a 45% chance to avoid all incoming damage per attack while we are below 30% health. And I don't think I need to explain how valuable this perk actually is, especially since it only activates while we are low health. Next up is Nerd Rage. This is essential for every bloodied low health build and should not be passed up. It is our visual indicator for when we are below 20% health and in that sweet spot for being bloodied. But aside from being an indicator, it offers a lot of bonuses. At max rank while we are below 20% health, it grants us 20% extra damage with all weapons we are holding, as well as 15% faster action point regeneration and 40 damage resistance. Definitely a must have for all bloodied builds, and again is reinforcing that fact that we must be at that sweet spot to gain the most benefits from this playstyle. Now Nerd Rage and Serendipity are the only 100% necessary perks for a low health build in my opinion. However, there is one more perk worth mentioning at least for the bloodied melee builds out there that is absolutely needed, and that is Radical. This perk grants us 5 extra strength when we have enough radiation covering our health. Coincidentally, this lines up perfectly with our goal to keep 80% of our health completely filled with radiation. The reason this is beneficial for primarily melee bloody builds is because it's a perfect synergization for the build. The extra 5 points to strength result in 25 extra carry weight capacity points and 25% extra melee damage. So in conclusion for the perks, prioritize your defensive perks, you will need them. But above all else, make sure you have Serendipity and Nerd Rage in your loadout. Now obviously Serendipity does not apply to power armor users, but I will touch on that and give an alternative in the moment. Also, a handy tip is to find a way to include Ricochet into your build as it can provide a slew of benefits when in combination with many other perks that benefit the bloodied playstyle. More on that in a video linked in the top right. Now let's talk mutations. The other bonuses to being low health is that it allows us to take full advantage of a mutation called Adrenal Reaction. This mutation basically gives our character a less powerful bloodied effect across the board by nature. It increases our damage as our health decreases, maxing out at giving us 50% extra damage while we are below 20% HP. Again, another indicator at why 20% is our sweet spot. And then finally, in terms of in-game bonuses that we can acquire from being at low health, we can touch on armor and power armor modifications. This one specifically applies to power armor users. I'm talking about the emergency protocols modification for the power armor chest piece. This is by far one of the most powerful benefits that you can add to a bloodied power armor builds arsenal. It is a fantastic alternative since we cannot use serendipity. What this does is make you take 50% less damage from all incoming damage sources across the board, and it also makes you move 25% faster than normal. Both benefits activating while you are under that 20% health threshold. Again, another reason to play while at such low health. Now, this only applies to power armor users unfortunately, but this makes sense and makes bloodied power armor builds actually worthwhile in my opinion, since they do not get the unyielding stat bonuses or the serendipity perk bonuses. So to summarize everything, the bonuses we receive for being below 20% health are as follows. For the non-power armor bloodied builds, we gain 170% extra damage due to Bloodied plus Nerd Rage and Adrenal Reaction. Then also a 45% chance to avoid all incoming damage from Serendipity. An extra 15% speed to your AP regeneration, 40 damage resistance smack dab on top, then 75 extra carry capacity, 75% extra melee and unarmed damage, a much more accurate shot in VATS due to increased perception, better prices for buying and selling to vendors, also you gain roughly 30% more experience due to intelligence points, 75% extra action points to use at your discretion, a much better sneak potential statistic due to the high agility as well, and you are able to deal out critical hits much more frequently, which means much more damage. And for the power armor bloodied users, your benefits for being below 20% HP are as follows. 170% extra damage due to bloodied, plus nerd rage and adrenal reaction, 40 damage resistance, an extra 15% speed to your AP regeneration, a 25% movement speed increase, 
and a 50% damage reduction negation to all incoming damage sources, which makes you incredibly tanky. And also, a little side benefit for pair armor players, you have a legendary perk card called Pair Armor Reboot, which at max rank gives you a 40% chance to just simply not die, and it refills your health back up to its highest possible point, meaning if your health is covered in radiation, and this perk activates and you don't die, then you will then be fully meeting the radiation bar, not affecting your bloodied leveled at all, which is really cool. And I guess that's it. That is all of the wisdom I can possibly think of on this subject to share with you guys. If you feel that I did miss something important, comment it down below so that others can see. But aside from that, thank you all so much for watching my complete guide to being a bloodied build. I hope you all learnt at least one thing from this video. As always, these are my channel members and Patreon supporters. If you'd like to have your name listed at the end of every video, like these legends here, then feel free to support the channel via the links in the description. And if you're new here, then be sure to subscribe, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my social media linked down below as always. I've been Tia, and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome to Valhalla.